everybody. Um, okay, we're going to try this. New software, new pen. Let's do it. I'm limited to 15 minutes. Okay, so in chapter 9, we're going to be looking at infinite series. Um, if you've not heard about series before at all ever, it's literally, I hate to use the word series of numbers, but it's a pattern of numbers um, that are all being added together. So you're going to see plus signs in the middle. This is not like when you were in middle school and they had you... Um, like fill in the pattern. It's kind of like that, except now we're adding all the numbers together. So because it's calculus, um, our series are going to have an infinite number of terms. In other words, they will be never ending. Um, some of them will sum to infinity, which is kind of what seems reasonable to us, but some of them won't. They will have a finite sum. So we're gonna add up an infinite number of terms and somehow get a finite number for our sum. So the general form of a series looks like this. We have not seen this notation since Riemann sums. Um, we have the summation, which is saying we're gonna add a bunch of stuff up. Um, this right here will eventually be a rule for how to generate the terms, um, but right now they're just putting an A, but notice like it's A sub K and all the terms are A1, A2, A3. What this is doing is saying, okay, when you generate, you're gonna generate your very first term by plugging in a one. So if this rule was k squared, our first term would be 1 squared, our second term would be 2 squared, our third term would be 3 squared. You always start with this integer number they gave you and go through all of the integer numbers until you get to the number at the top. Again, these are infinite, so this is always going to be an infinity up here. Okay, so the very first and easiest way that we're going to learn to look at series is by looking at what are called the partial sums of a series. Um, what I want to know is if I added up all infinity terms, what would they add up to? But that's a very difficult question to answer directly. So what we're the first thing we're gonna try is, but is look at the partial sums. So the notation for partial sum is this right here, S sub N, this N will be a number, and that is the number of terms they want you to add up. So as you can see down here, if you have S1, they just want you to have list the first term. S2 would be adding the first and second terms. S3, the first, the second, and the third. So um, for example, if my series was just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, my first term, my first partial sum would be one, my second partial sum would be one plus two or three, my third partial sum would be one plus two plus three, which is six, okay. and so on and so on. Um, by looking at the partial sums, hopefully it's going to give us a hint as to what the series itself is actually doing. All right, so there are two things that a series can do. It can converge or diverge. Um, converge means that it's going to, oops, sorry. Converge means that it's going to approach some limit. So in other words, as you start looking at your partial sums, you do the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth partial sum, what you see are your partial sums approaching some limit. They're kind of, kind of, I, I say converging to a number or they're, they're approaching a limit. If that is not happening, then what we have is divergence where the partial sums are kind of bouncing around or sometimes they're just going to infinity or going to negative infinity. If that's the case, that's what we call divergence. Okay, so we're gonna look at a couple series and their partial sums and see if we can tell if they diverge or not. And we're also gonna practice this which is write the series, which is a big thing that we see on open-ended APs. So if you look at this first series that I gave you, 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1. Um, if I were to write the partial sums of that, the first partial sum is 1. The second partial sum is 1 minus 1. We'll, we'll just make that a big minus, which is 0. The third partial sum is going to be 1 minus 1 plus 1. Jesus which brings me back to one. And you may notice as you start doing partial sums here that all this thing is doing in its partial sums is bouncing between one and zero, one and zero. Every time you do a partial sum, you're gonna get an answer of one or zero. Because of that, it does not converge. We say this series diverges as it's not approaching a limit. Now, as far as writing the series, anytime you see the thing that says write a series, what they're wanting you to do is write the rule using the summation. So I need to figure out a way to generate all of those terms up there, all those ones and negative ones. And my thought is that those ones, that all those numbers up there are just powers of negative one. So if I make my rule negative one to the n, n is the thing that's gonna change, right? My first 
one is a positive one. So I have two choices. I can start my series at two so that it would be negative one squared or positive one, or I can start my series at zero. Negative one to zero is also going to give me a one. And then my next term will be negative one to the first, which will give me a negative one, negative one to the second, which will give me a positive one, and that will create the series. So I'll have to just finish it off as put an infinity up here. You will get better and better at writing those rules as we go, I promise. All right, let's take a look at this next one. These terms, if 3 over 10, 3 over 100, 3 over 1,000, and then in case you didn't notice the pattern, they do us a favor. They often do this at the end, give you 3 over. They tell you the rule. It's 3 over 10 to the end. So in other words, I'm pretty sure my series is going to look a heck of a lot like that. The only thing I have to do is figure out where to start my n. So in other words, what's the first number I want to plug in? Well, my first term is 3 over 10, so I want my n to start out, my first term, to just be a 1. So my first term will be 3 over 10. My second term, when I plug in a 2, will be 3 over 10 squared, or 3 over 100, and then 3 over 10 to the third, which would be 3 one thousandths. And again, don't forget we put our infinity up here. Now, this one has interesting partial sums. If you notice, your first partial sum is 3 tenths. I'm going to write it as a decimal, 0.3. Your second partial sum is 3 tenths plus 3 one thousandths, which comes out to 0.33. Your third partial sum is 3 tenths plus 3 one thousandths, or 3 one hundredths, I'm sorry, I said thousandths. I did it up there too, sorry. Plus 3 one thousandths, and that comes out to 0.333. So you probably don't have to do too many partial sums here to notice what's happening. Every time you add a term, you're adding a 0.3 to the end. And this is eventually going to turn in, in its infinite form, to 0.3 repeating. So this is the type of series that we can easily look at the partial sum and say, yes, this thing converges. It converges to one third. In other words, this whole thing down here, this thing that represents an infinite number of terms is exactly equal to one third. Fun. Okay, so this next series, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably can predict what's going to happen here. My first partial sum is one. My second partial sum is three. My third partial sum is six. My fourth partial sum is ten. What's happening to my partial sums, they are very quickly going to infinity. So if the series converge, no way. This thing diverges. It's ridiculous. Usually if a series diverges, we have no interest in writing a rule for it. But since we're here, it's kind of fun. The rule for this is as simple as it can be. It's just n. So plug in a 1, plug in a 2, plug in a 3, plug in a 4, and add them all up. Okay. Um, this series is an interesting one. It's written in decimal form, but the first thing that I'm going to do to look at it to make it easier is rewrite them in fractions because I pretty much noticed that there's a pattern that's much easier to see if you look at it in terms of fractions. Um, so you notice 2 over 1, this is 3 halves, this is 4 thirds, this is 5 fourths. So I'm guessing the next one is 6 fifths, and sure enough it is. And then that must be 7 sixth. So I can figure out kind of the pattern a little more easily if I look at fractions. So I'm going to go down here and write the rule. There's a couple different ways to write the rule. None are more correct than any other. Um, if you start at n equals 1, then your first one would be n in the denominator because you want a 1 in the denominator. And then in the top, you need that number to be one bigger, so n plus one. Um, you could also be clever and say, you know what, I'm going to start with n plus two. I'm going to start with two. That way, my rule is going to be n and then n minus one. So in this one, I'm looking at it and saying, OK, I have a numerator that is one bigger than the denominator. Over here, it's just looking at it in a different way and saying, I have a denominator that's one fewer than the numerator. The difference in how you write it is that you have to make sure you start at an appropriate place so that you create the same terms. If I put a 1 into this, I'm going to get a 2 over 1. If I put a 2 into this, I'm going to get a 2 over 1. So these will both generate the same terms. 
it, they just look a little bit different. Okay. Now, whether or not this thing is going to converge is a different story. We don't know. So my first partial sum is 2. My second partial sum is going to add 1.5 to that or be 3.5. My third partial sum is going to add 1 and a third to that, so 4.8 repeating. Um, and then my fourth partial sum, I'm not even going to try to do in my head. Um, but this is one where the terms are getting larger. Are they going to infinity? I don't know. This is a question. This is going to be a question mark on whether or not it's converging. Um, Partial sums is a nice way for some series, but for most series, it's not going to get the job done, and this is one of those. The terms are getting bigger, but are they approaching infinity? I don't know. We'll have to look a little closer, and we'll, um, we'll have more tests that we can use for that. Okay, so again, if you look at this one, you may notice a pattern. Um, the one I kind of ignore at first, the first thing I noticed was I have a 0.9 and a 0.9 squared. So I asked myself, can I make a pattern out of that? And sure enough, look, this is 0.9 cubed, this is 0.9 to the fourth, and this is 0.9 to the zero. So down here, my series, I just need 0.9 to the n, and I can start at n equals zero and take it to infinity. Okay. Now, does it converge? This is going to be an interesting question. So uh, my first partial sum is 1. My second partial sum is 1.9. My third partial sum is 1.9 plus 0.81, which I'm just going to, don't worry about me, 1.9 plus 0.81, 2.71. So this is another one where the numbers are growing, but are they growing to infinity or are they not? So this is going to be another one where, well, we're not sure. We think we need another test. Partial sums isn't going to do it for us here. Okay, so like I said, you cannot always tell from partial sums. We got a couple where we can tell. It's pretty obvious. If it's not obvious, we have more work to do. Um, that work will consist of a few tests. We're going to look at something called a P-series, which is really a quick test. We're going to look at something called a geometric series, which you will be begin to fall in love with. And then we're going to look at something called a ratio test, which is the best test ever invented. Um, there's way more than that, two series, but AP slimmed it way down this year because, you know, I'm limited to 15 minute lessons online. So, um, all right, I will be back with another video. Um, there is a short assignment that goes with this. Please make sure that you do that and submit it. I made it so you can write right in that Word doc and resubmit it right back to me. Have a good day. Stop in and see me or chat me if you have any questions at all. Talk to you later.